I'm going to give a short presentation about the Vardin Visual Editor. Uh, the Visual Editor is uh, a tool for uh, layouting or designing UIs for Vardin applications. Uh, it runs in Eclipse and on the web and hopefully shortly in other platforms as well, such as NetBeans. Uh, the visual editor consists of two parts. Uh, the main part, uh, the visual designer, is uh, a Vardin application actually that allows you to visually edit user interfaces. Uh, because it's a Vardin application actually, uh, what you see is really what you get. So it's not a representation uh, of the UI, it's the actual UI. Of course, there are some added things like grid lines and, and the panel that you, uh, the properties panel and uh, an overlay, but, but otherwise it's, it's the live application. Uh, oh, let's not skip there yet. Uh, the other part, is the integrations. So these are actually other parts. Uh, for the time being, we have been working on the integration into Eclipse. But uh, you can also uh, integrate this to almost anything where you can run a web browser. So NetBeans is coming up. And uh, you can also use it on the web in your browser. Uh, in Eclipse, we have now uh, also a, um, kind of a code editor as well. You can switch between the visual view and the code view. We have a full round trip between code and the visual representation. And so I'm just going to show how that looks like at the moment. So in Eclipse, we just need a regu regular Vardin project. Wait for it to create. Then what we want to create here is a Vardin custom component or composite. It's the Vardin way of saying that this is a composite. Let's make a message thing component. So then we have some, some code created for us. As you can see, uh, the component extends custom component. So it's a Vardin custom component. Uh, it has uh, some stuff marked as auto-generated that indicates that you should not touch it in the code because the visual editor will change it if you, if you visually edit. Uh, it automatically adds a uh, main layout, absolute layout. Uh, usually you want to be able to move around stuff freely. Uh, you can change this to any layout, but usually the root layout will be an absolute layout. Uh, we'll take a look at this code a little closer later, but let's skip over to the design tab that's right down here. So now we actually started a web application, uh, a Vardin application. It's an embedded browser here. And it's a Jetty server that runs in, embedded in the background and communicates with Eclipse. Um, we have um, a bunch of components, most of the components in, in the Vardin core. Uh, a tree where you can see your layout and the properties panel. So let's go ahead and add some stuff. Just adding a text field, rich text editor. Uh, 
So this is, as you can see, I'm adding stuff to the absolute layout now. Uh, as I said, you can change this to some other layout, or you can use, within this layout, you can use other layouts, such as horizontal layout. This can be handy in some situations when you want to add uh, components that should be together within the, within the UI. Like, for instance, if I add a few buttons and want to keep them together here. So, uh, let's take a look at the properties panel. Uh, we have some layouting stuff, but let's skip over to the properties here. I can change the button, the caption of the button, rather. Uh, let's make that cancel. I can change it to a link style. And then something really nice. Uh, alignments are quite complicated to do in code. Here you can just align stuff, which is nice. Uh, spacing for the layout. So now I, the, since I have a horizontal layout here, I can move around these components and they move together. So that will be our subject field. Uh, I can resize components. You can see it tells the size here. If I want to, I can use EMs or percentage or whatever. Um, which brings me to the next point. At the moment, this is not resizing. This is, of course, not what I wanted to do. So these little, these little circles here indicate where, in what direction the component is anchored right now. So I can go ahead and turn on the anchor, anchoring here for these components. And for this one, I'll probably just want to anchor it in that direction. Let's just move them over here so you can See what's going on. I'll make that equally wide. So now we have a more fluid interface right here. Uh, let's go and look at the source. So now it's generated a lot of source code for us here. It's nicely divided into uh, creating different parts of the UI. But as you can see, it's, it's a mess, actually, <laughs> or kind of hard to read. So one more thing that you should probably do is to name your fields. So I'm naming the field so that it actually makes sense when I, when I look at the code. Oh well. So now it looks a little bit nicer. We have a send button and, and so on. Uh, you can go ahead and change the code here, uh, even if it says auto-generated. But you should be aware that the visual editor will change that back if you if you visually edit it. Um, also, here's a small place where you can where it said, says to do add user code here, so we can go ahead and do, do just that. I'm just adding a um, notification here. Like so. 
So now if you go over to the design view, you can see the button still doesn't do anything. So this is one point to remember. This is not actually your live application <coughs> yet. It's, uh, it shows the UI, but uh, we don't have any listeners live here or other code. It just shows the kind of the layout. So if you want to really test how this, how this works in practice, uh, you should add it to your application, like so. Oops. I'm not too used to this keyboard here. Add a new message thing and see if that works. So now I'm just going to run it <coughs> on the server within Eclipse and hopefully once the server starts we'll have the UI live and we can press the send button. Let's go back to the design view. So now if I edit this, uh, add more listeners or something, I can go over to the, to the live application and see that everything works as I want it to. Um, also, why, one thing that I could mention is uh, Things like alignment and uh, expanding components that require a lot of code if you do it manually are really easy to do with this. You just, it's just like one click. So that's one thing that you will immediately notice that's quite handy. So that was the demo. We are releasing the 0 0.6 release today. Uh, in Eclipse, it's available from this address. It's an Eclipse update site. Uh, if you feel like tracking the developments more closely, there's also an experimental version of the plugin. And you can also take a look at the web version uh, that's deployed from the nightly build each night. Uh, I can't promise you that these will always work very well, but we try our best not to break it. So consider yourself warned. Also, if you want to follow the development or rather in which direction we are going, uh, you can go over to the wiki. Uh, there's a main page which has uh, the plan, general plan, and kind of describes the component. And then if you append slash roadmap to that address, you'll get the actual roadmap and can see how we have planned out the future. Also, you can, as usual, follow the tickets and the progress in track. Questions? What, <coughs> what new stuff will there be in the next version, 0 0.8 or whatever it's going to be? Uh, you can go and take a look at the roadmap for the whole list, but there are things like uh, we have a few components that are not supported yet. Those will be in. Uh, we have, I think we have snapping is one feature that everyone wants. Snap to object and snap to grid and so on. Uh, but <coughs> just go over to the wiki and have a look at the roadmap. There are lots of interesting stuff and you can all also provide feedback if you need something faster or if you have <laughs> other kind of 
thoughts about what we should do. Also about the code generation, that would be one, one thing that you can comment on. If you really try to make applications with this, uh, comment on how the code is structured because we haven't been uh, like trying it too much. It looks pretty nice, but I mean, there are a lot of use cases, so please provide feedback if you have any. What about add-ons? Uh, add-ons support is planned. Also, team support, these are two big features that will come at some point. Uh, so you could get most add-ons. This will probably require us to uh, specify some sort of um, uh, so that each add-on can have a configuration UI. And so we haven't planned it completely yet, but been thinking about it and it's coming at some point. Can you add generated views into other generated views? Uh, at the moment, no. And that's also something that's coming. You could, but it doesn't show up in the, in the UI right now among the components, so it's not a big problem, but it's not implemented yet.